all, so before we get started, I wanted to let you know my big three. I am a Pisces Sun with a Libra Moon and a Gemini Rising. And today we're going to be focusing on two ruling planets, Venus and Mars. But before we dissect into those planets, I wanted to answer the question, what is a ruling planet? And essentially the ruling planets are the, the bosses of the zodiac. They're pretty much the ones that call the shots and influence how each sign feels and how we all feel in general under the influence of a particular planet or a particular sign. So for instance, right now we're in Taurus season and me personally, I've been feeling a lot more chill. I've been dabbling a lot more in luxurious things, maybe overspending, um, really diving into beauty and the arts, things of that nature. So I hope you get it now. So to start off my ruling planet mini series under this new astrology series that I've decided to start because I have such a huge passion for astrology, we are going to focus on Venus as I mentioned before, aka the Divine Feminine and we are also going to focus on Mars aka the Divine Masculine. They are two opposing planets and I'll get more into that as we continue through this video. First, I wanted to let you know what Venus actually represents as a planet. Venus actually rules over two zodiac signs, Taurus and Libra, and I'm a Libra moon, so of course I've been very engrossed into this planet. And what Venus represents is the goddess of love. Um, the simplistic way to explain Venus would be to say that it represents love and money, but obviously it's so much more deeper than that. Um, Venus is not only a way that it shows through your chart how you seek and enjoy pleasure and what you spend money on as far as leisure and activities go, but it also represents how you navigate through relationships. So for instance, if you're a Venus in Cancer, um, you probably enjoy the security of relationships. If you're a Venus in Sagittarius, you probably enjoy the freedom and travel and excitement of relationships. Or if you're a Venus in Aries, you enjoy the thrill, the chase or the seek, you know, things of that nature. Um, it goes a lot deeper than that, even what I just said, but yeah, Venus represents the pleasures of life and focuses mainly on relationships and how we communicate or how we seek pleasures in our life. I guess I'll start with how Venus is represented through Libra since I'm a Libra moon. I feel like the difference with Libra when it comes to how Venus rules them as a sign is Libra tends to show their Venus Venusian, if I'm pronouncing that right, Venusian energy through aesthetics and balance and harmony. Like Libra is the type to love beauty all around. They like a serene environment. Like me personally, I love a peaceful environment. I love beautiful aesthetics. I love like flowers and candles and a clean, decluttered space, things of that nature. I also enjoy, you know, material things. I like pretty things. You know, if you if you come across a Libra, you tend to notice that they're really big or very opinionated on what looks attractive and what doesn't look attractive. What feels good and seems right and balanced and what seems chaotic and all over the place. You know, we like serenity, we like peace, we like calm, tranquility. And as far as how Venus is represented and shown through Taurus, um, so I'm a Pisces, right? And we're very compatible with Tauruses and I've always tried to figure out why because the relationships that I've had with Tauruses have been very interesting to say the very least but um, it's because of hedonism like Pisces we like to escape right so Tauruses they're like the embodiment of hedonistic heaven like if you I've lived with the tourists before and they literally have like everything that you can imagine to enjoy your space and to enjoy being a homebody like they have alcohol they have tree they have like plush pillows and things of that nature so that's why I personally think I get along with Tauruses that and because I share Venus energy that they share but Tauruses that's what I like to I like to say about them um, hedonist hedonism they're really grounded in their senses, you know, like people are always so cheap and basic when they explain Tauruses, but Tauruses, like, um, it really turns me on how they enjoy life. It's 
how they dive into their senses like when they're eating they're really eating when they're sleeping they're really sleeping when they're having sex they're enjoying every single moment every single fiber in their body like it's all about being rooted with the earth and being rooted and grounded you know um with taste and smell and pain, like all of that so that's how i can tell um and I, even though i just said that it is very basic i can always tell when i'm dealing with a taurus or when i meet a taurus because they're not just like a cancer who is like oh my god i'm hungry i want to eat food you know like cancers they're really big on food too tauruses they like to explain the food they like to talk about it be very detailed and they're also fabulous cooks um cancers are good cooks too and capricorns and gemini's those are like the big four but tauruses oh no because they also like the finer things in life so it's like they're not just gonna cook you like you know cancer they'll make you like a bomb breakfast right but taurus they're about to like go in they about to make you like a filet mignon they like ugh. and it's because they want to enjoy it they want to taste it if you come across someone who appears to really enjoy the finer things in life and really, really knows how to do it right, you're probably more than likely dealing with somebody who is ruled by Venus somewhere on their chart, either Libra or Taurus, or um, they just have Venus aspects that bring out those qualities even more. So I'm just going to leave it with that. Actually, no, I'm not going to leave it with that. If you actually want to know more about your Venus, just look to do your birth chart, first of all. And then look to see what house your Venus lies in because that's the area of your life that you're more likely to place that charm and that beauty and finer things in life and pleasures, love and money and all that. That is the focus of your life. So the next planet that we're going to focus on is Mars, aka the Divine Masculine. And Mars is the ruling planet of Aries and the former ruling planet of Scorpio. But Scorpio is now ruled by Pluto after they discovered that planet. But um, it is the ruling planet of Aries and rightfully so because Mars is the planet of passion, anger, separation, and um, I forget the last one. Oh yeah, planet of war as well. So wherever it lies in your birth chart, it pretty much dictates how you pursue your goals, how you assert yourself in all things, including sex, um, how you break up, how you cut people off, things of that nature. Very action oriented, which is why it is the ruling planet of Aries. Aries, you know, um, I've had many Aries in my life. I have Aries in my life and they are definitely the infant of the zodiac and you know as you know i'm a pisces right so i am the grandfather of the zodiac i'm the oldest sign and they're like the baby um and there's two things that i want to say um aries are notoriously known for being quick to anger obviously so you know mars like anger frustration passion um they're 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 known to be quick to anger, but they're also known to be very action oriented. They tend to be the leaders because they tend to be the ones doing the work. They'll be the ones to get up and go versus just sitting down and thinking about it and thinking about it in their head, AKA Pisces. You know, we like to daydream and we'll think and think and think on an idea and Aries is like, okay, we got the idea, let's go, let's do it. Um, they're very action oriented, which is why they pretty much slay all their goals in life. I've never met an Aries that ended up not pursuing something or staying stuck in a rut um they're also really big on being adventurous and exploring too right because they're a fire sign so it's not just sages that like to go out and about um leos and aries are also like that but um but aside from what I just said about them being quick to anger and how they're, they're considered the infant of the zodiac, I think it's also very important to note that they're not just childish, they're also childlike. They're very into exploring the world. They're very into like, you know, because they're like, they're since because they're considered the infant of the zodiac, it's like they're seeing everything for the first time. It's like they're a new spirit on this earth. So um, any experience, excitement, drama they love it they love it they thrive off of it originally when i was creating this video i thought i was just going to focus on venus because quite honestly astrology is jam-packed like there is so much to unpack with you guys which is why i was like 
you know forget it I should just do these videos because I could do them for a while this is a real passion of mine I love astrology so um, I decided to not just focus on Venus but to bring in Mars as well because there's so much to go into it and I thought I could do this in a very calm and quick way but um Venus, like I said, is a divine feminine, and it was very important for me to mention the divine feminine and how Mars is the divine masculine because, um, one, they're opposites, and the planets that they rule or that they used to rule, aka Scorpio, are opposites as well. Aries and Libra are opposite signs, and Taurus and Scorpio are opposite signs, aka called sister signs. And one thing that I love, and I read this a long time ago when I was like, you know, going on some rabbit hole of astrology online one day but basically it says something along the lines of even though they're opposites two strands are of the same core which is very 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 true I see a lot of differences with the signs but a lot of similarities for instance like I said Aries tend to be more aggressive um, they're more masculine they're more about going for theirs and the competition and passion things of that nature whereas Libra you know they're more sitting in their Venetian energy allowing things to come to them um, taking it easy not really you know balance tranquility and Mars is just like bulldozing in there you feel me but it's funny because um, it's like the perfect match but and also when it comes to Aries and Libra and Taurus and Scorpio they tend to have the same goals in mind but they always go about it in a very different way um, and I can't really give an example of that like there are just so many examples I could give and this video will be going on forever but um, you have to see it to understand it and really study this stuff like I study it um, but that's pretty much it. Um, I really wanted to make this quick. I hope it makes sense for you guys. And please check out any of these sites. I personally love AstroSeek. Um, Cafe Astrology is, I feel like, step one. But when you really start getting into it, you'll realize that AstroSeek is better. But do your birth chart. Look at where your Venus lies on your birth chart. Like, see which house it lies in. Look up what that house represents and then um, see how your Venus influences that like where your pleasures and things of that lie and do the same thing for your Mars like where do you assert yourself how do you pursue your goals like what is holding you back that's why I really wanted to do this astrology channel I really want people to not turn their noses up at it but like that I really believe in this stuff and um have many reasons as to why and if you want me to create a video about that I could do that as well but um this is a great way a great guide to find out about yourself really understand and um a lot of people assume with astrology that oh they're just saying whatever but no you don't understand like everybody's chart is very very different from the degrees to the placements everything so you're not it's very rare you're gonna find the same exact chart and even if you do find the same exact chart you're gonna find different angles and all of that so yeah I'm really excited about this series and I hope you guys continue to watch and once again I hope this made sense please let me know and if you want just comment down below and like this video if you want <laughs>